Hello friends, my name is Ajay and welcome to the first video in the Introduction to Angular series. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use the Angular framework to build your very own web applications. Now, if you didn't already know, Angular is a web application framework backed by Google. It is extremely stable and reliable. And in its recent release, Angular 18, they added a lot of quality of life improvements to Angular, making it much easier for developers to use. Now, I also think that Angular has a lot of instructional benefit for beginners. Because Angular is so well-structured and it is an all-in-one tool, as a new developer, you don't really have to do a lot of research and a lot of guesswork in trying to reinvent the wheel. Everything is essentially there for you in Angular. So it is a great tool to use. In addition, Angular is very good at scaling. So it's very good at building small projects as well as scaling up to much larger projects. And in industry, Angular is often used for industry grade and rather large web applications. Now to use Angular, we're going to be using the TypeScript programming language. If you haven't heard of TypeScript, TypeScript is basically a statically typed version of JavaScript, which enables our code to be significantly less error prone because a lot of the typing errors that you'd normally have with JavaScript is caught beforehand. And so TypeScript is really good for working with web applications and large projects because we do not have to worry about being bogged down by a lot of the same type of errors that we would have in a traditional vanilla, vanilla JavaScript um, program. Now, if you have not used JavaScript or TypeScript before, that is okay. For a lot of introductory uh, computer science classes, both at the high school and college level, they usually teach in Java. So there's a chance that you've already seen or worked with the Java language before. Now, as, as I've done for work um, in, as a TA, I've actually already created supplemental resources for Java developers to learn TypeScript and the TypeScript syntax and programming language. I will link all of that in the description below. So if you have never seen JavaScript and haven't really worked with either JavaScript or TypeScript before, I highly recommend checking out those resources first. That way you have the basic prerequisite knowledge to get started with using the Angular framework. In addition, I highly recommend installing Visual Studio Code as the IDE for developing these Angular applications. Visual Studio Code is kind of an industry standard now for creating web applications, and it has many extensions and great features that pair very well with Angular and very well with TypeScript. So it is a very good developer experience, and that is what I'm going to be using in, these, in, in this series and all of these videos. If you haven't downloaded it already, I will also link that in the description below. So let's get started with actually trying to set up Angular on our computers. So if you don't already have um, Node.js installed, it would be very important to install it. Uh, Node.js is basically a JavaScript runtime and it also includes something called NPM or Node Package Manager. And the Package Manager is the tool that we're going to use to actually install Angular so that we can use Angular commands in our terminal. So you can go to this nodejs.org and click on download Node.js if you don't already have it downloaded. And you can simply open this particular um, installer and follow the process. So on Mac, you'll just be going through the, uh, you'll just be going through the normal installer. And on Windows, there will also probably be a software installer. If you have a older version of Node, Angular also requires a certain minimum version in order to, in order to work. So it's best to, try to upgrade and update node and update NPM just in case you don't already have that um, to up to date. So once you install that, we can move this to the trash. In addition, I also wanted to point out angular.dev. So angular.dev is the new, as of the new um, version 18 release of Angular, the new page for documentation, tutorials, and everything related to Angular. So this is a great resource to bookmark if you want to learn more about Angular, learn more about its features, as well as you know learn about um, anything. They have some tutorials as well for building um, and learning Angular in your browser. They also have a playground which will allow you to play around with Angular code. And so overall, this website is great and you'll probably be on here as you start to become more familiar with Angular and you want to start learning and utilizing more of its features, the Angular website will include all of that. So I highly recommend bookmarking it and 
keeping it ready so that you can refer to it when needed. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my terminal right here. And what we need to do is we need to install the Angular CLI. What the CLI is, is it's going to allow us to use Angular commands in our terminal, and this will enable us to create Angular projects and to work with our projects. So to do this, we're going to be using the Node Package Manager that was installed in the previous step. Now to confirm that you have NPM installed, you can type npm dash dash version, and what it will do is it'll print out a version of NPM. As you can see, it says 10.8.2 on my computer. When you are working on this, especially if you're in the future, this version may be um, higher, this number may be higher, and that is totally okay. As long as you have something around this, you should be, or, or higher, you should be good. Now, in order to actually install Angular, we're going to use NPM. We're going to say NPM install, and this allows us to install the Angular framework. Now I'm going to add the dash G flag, and this is basically for installing this globally. So on your entire computer, not just specific to a certain project. And this will be good because as you're going to be working with Angular, if you want to create more and more Angular projects, it's best to just have um, Angular installed globally so that you're able to just run the command and get started. So I will have npm install dash G and then slash, or sorry, the, um, the at symbol, angular, and then slash CLI. And if I press this, you'll see that it's going to load here. And depending on if you've already installed this before or whether it's updating or never installed it before, it's going to run, it's going to run all the steps and install angular for you. Now you may also get the error, which I just have here, which says permission denied. You'll see something like permission denied here, permission denied. And this occurs in for certain people, so depending on your computer, depending on how things are set up, you may or may not see this. And if we have a permission denied error, we want to add the word sudo before the command that we ran. And what sudo does is it runs the command, you know, after it in the um, administrate in administrator, right, administrator mode. And so it'll have the maximum level of permission, and so it will be able to um, have the permission to work and edit certain files, right? So I'll just type sudo and then npm install dash g at angular cli just like how i did before just again with this new sudo keyword right here and so i'm just going to press enter here and now it's going to ask for a password and you're going to type your computer password in so as i'm typing you can see that it's actually not showing up um, anything that is okay it's registering it it's just it isn't going to show dots or anything as a placeholder if you press enter, now you will see that it begins to run. And it says here, change 265 packages in two seconds. If you're installing this for the first time, you may have much longer output here and it might take a little bit longer, but eventually once you have your, once you have the input again to start typing, it will have installed properly. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just clear my window by typing in clear. And from now and from here, we can use our Angular commands to work with Angular project. Now, the first thing I'm going to do in my terminal is I'm going to just make sure that I have access to the Angular command and that everything has been set up properly. Now, Angular is, we, when we want to use Angular commands, we don't just type out Angular. Instead, there is kind of this shorthand ng. And so you'll see this a lot. ng is used, that is kind of the shorthand, uh, the abbreviation for Angular a lot of times. And so when you're trying to work with Angular commands, you will type ng first, just like how before we had npm, we're now going to be typing ng. And so I can type ng and then dash dash version, and this will tell us the version of Angular that we have. So we have Angular 18.2, which is perfect. And depending on the version of Angular that you're working with, it again, may be higher and maybe lower, but this tutorial will be based on Angular 18 and this should apply also in the future as well. Now to create your very own Angular project, you want to use the ng new command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear my terminal again, and I'm actually going to CD into, I think I call it YouTube, and I have this Angular folder. And so this is where I'm going to be creating this project. Now, all of the code in these videos is going to be available on GitHub as well, and the link will be in the description. So you can feel free to clone or download that code if you'd like to see it for yourself as well. 
I'm going to press clear and I'll type ls just to show you that there's really nothing in my folder right now. I'm going to type in ng new and after this is going to be the name of my Angular application. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to be calling this getting started. So getting dash started. And now we're going to have a bunch of um, kind of a bunch of yes and no questions for us to be able to customize our project. So the first thing it's saying, would you like to enable auto completion? I will say yes here. So you just type in Y. And then it says, would you like to share data with the Angular team? For the purposes of this, I'm just going to say N for no. And now it's going to give us the option to choose the type of style sheet that we're working with. If you've used HTML and CSS before, you will have definitely heard of CSS. However, it's probably less like you th that you've heard of SAS or SCSS. SCSS gives us a lot of extra customization and it's a more powerful um, styling language to style our websites. But for the purposes of the tutorial now, we're just going to stick with CSS. So you can use your arrow keys to select CSS and press enter. Now it's going to say, would you like to enable server-side rendering? I just press enter here and it says no as the default. Um, we're going to just keep it at that for now. We will probably explore that topic in a future video. Now you'll see that we have this list where it says create, create. These are all of the files that we start out with in our Angular project. Now we have here an error. Um, it just says to permanently fix this problem. We can run this command. So I'm just going to follow exactly what it says to do right here. <clears throat> And there we go. Now, if I do ls, um, you will see that it created this new getting started folder. I can cd into getting started to open this folder and press ls again. And now you'll see these are all of the contents of my new file. Now I'm going to type code dot to open this in Visual Studio Code. Again, Visual Studio Code is kind of how we're going to be working with our projects. And this is how I'm going to be working with uh, the projects in the future. So once you once you kind of have it set up and once you've opened it for the first time, you'll have it in your recents menu and you can just continue uh, working from there and picking off where we left off. So the last thing I want to do in this video is to basically go over the structure of our of our project a little bit and also show you how to actually get the Angular project up and running right on a web browser so that we can test we can test it and, and uh, begin to work with it. So you'll see that there's a lot of files here. Um, you'll have this VS code, VS code folder, which basically just includes some, uh, you know, some tooling for VS code. You don't have to worry about that. A public folder, this is a um, icon that will show up kind of on your browser in the top left uh, for, your, um, for your website. And as you're working on your application, you can change this. You can also upload different images and stuff into this public folder. But most of our Angular code is going to be located in our source folder. So you can see in your source folder, you have an index.html, main.ts, so this is our TypeScript extension, and then styles.css. Now, we also have this app folder, and in the app folder, we have a bunch of files. We have what we call app component HTML, app component TS, CSS, etc. Now, I'm going to be talking more in depth about what components are and all of that in the next video. That is components is like the main basic building block of Angular projects. But for now, I want to point your attention to the main.ts file. And the main.ts file is essentially the entry point into your application. So you'll see this, this code here that says like bootstrap application, and then we pass in this app component. And so basically what we're doing is we're starting our Angular project at this app component and this bootstrap application is what's going to kick off the entire process to start our app. In addition, if we open up this angular.json file, the angular.json file will also kind of include a lot of extra information and scripts and et cetera about our project. We don't really need to worry about this right now, but in the future, as we begin to customize our project, we will be working with these files a little bit more. Lastly, I'd like to open the package.json and package.json basically allows us to control all of the dependencies and external code that we want to import essentially in from the internet into our project. And so you can see here that for our dependencies, Angular automatically adds all of the Angular dependencies that we need so we don't have to worry about it. It also adds a few others like Rx, JS, TSLib, and Zone. We'll be talking about that way in the future. 
And you also see these scripts right over here. And we can run these scripts to basically start our project. And you'll see here under scripts and start, we have this thing called ng serve. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press on this button in VS Code, which opens a new terminal at my project. So you can see I'm in my getting started folder. I can ls, so you can see all of my files. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in ng serve, and I'm going to have the option, the dash dash, which says open. And so I'm going to try running this. Now see that it, say, it says that your node packages may not be installed. So if it's not installed, you can type npm install. And npm install is going to essentially ensure that all of the packages, everything in this dependencies list has been installed into our environment so that we can run our app locally on our computer. So this may take a few seconds. So we're just going to wait for that to finish and I'll cut back once everything is done installing. All right, everything has done as finished installing. You can see here that it added 971 packages, quite a lot. You'll also see that there's now this new node modules folder once you start installing all of your packages. And the node modules folder, as you can see, includes a lot of different tools. And this is kind of all the behind the scenes and what actually makes Angular work. Um, we will be exploring this a little bit more in the future. But for now, just know that this node module folders will look really large, but you don't really have to touch it for now. In addition, if you're working in a Git repository, there is this git ignore file, which will, which should have as a line in here, node modules. So that way, if you're trying to upload this to GitHub, this massive folder will be ignored and it won't be included in your uploads. Now, again, I'm going to run the same command. So if you want to see a previous command you ran in your terminal, you can just press the up arrow. So this brings me to npm install. I can press the up arrow again, which brings me to ng serve and ng serve runs our project locally. So you can see that it just brings up my browser and now you can see my website has loaded. So I'm at localhost, I'm at the port 4200. And so you can, whenever your um, ng serve is running, you can go to localhost um, 4200 and it will open up your application. Now you can see that this is my home page. You can see like this text, hello, getting started. Congratulations, your app is running. And you can actually find this, you can find this text like hello getting started and congratulations your app is running in your app.component.html file. So there's all this placeholder code here right now. And when we begin actually working with components in the next video, we're going to erase all of this and start from scratch. But basically this is all of the code that is provided in kind of the getting started, the template of Angular. And you can kind of see if I scroll down quite a bit, you should probably find the, you will find the text um, at some point. There it is right here. We have hello title and then congratulations, your app is running. So there is a lot, there are a lot of files here, but do not worry. In the next video, we're going to be going over what all of these different files are and how they help us build our Angular project. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Please like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more and see you all in the next one.